So what are the benefits here? As a data analyst, the benefit here is that you get exposed to the entire workflow quite a lot. Hey guys, my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. In this video, I want to show you guys some different job scenarios which you might end up in as a data analyst. And what I mean by different job scenarios, I mean that based on what kind of company you join, you know, what kind of culture do they have, what kind of teams do they have in place, what kind of architecture, you might have a very different job setup. So today I want to look at three different ones and how the different setups might affect which skills you get to use and what it is that you get to focus on as a data analyst for that company. So this is company A. This is the first company and this is a smaller company. And what that means for you as a data analyst, it might mean that there is less governance and you have more freedom. So what I've written here is, you know, like I said, smaller company, you might have access to the source systems. So in this setup, these two guys are the data analysts or data scientists or um, whatever it is. And here your, your job might be that you have to actually do data modeling. You have to do more data cleansing, visualize data and maybe advanced analytics if that is part of your responsibilities but if we think about this from a architectural point of view and what are the pros and cons so architecturally wise you will be connecting to source systems so there's no centralized data warehouse which means that there is a lot of more data cleansing and a lot more great data transformation which you have to do but it's a challenge here though is that if you have two different people who are working on data driven initiatives they have to be quite synced on how they work with the data sources so that they use the same kind of logic and they, they consolidate data on the same in the same way if you have Python which I have here on the side if that is something that that you want to use then of course you have to take data from the source systems to python do the advanced analytics and then pass it on to the end users i've also put a logo of power bi here on the right side which means that is what you use to visualize data and push it out and because there is no semantic cohesive layer that means that inside your power bi uh, reports you need to make sure that you and this other person are quite synced on how you write the measures what kind of logic you use so that end users are getting re getting reports with the same calculations and the same results so what are the benefits Benefits here. As a data analyst, the benefit here is that you get exposed to the entire workflow quite a lot, which is great because that is the kind of experience you want. You want to learn a little bit about accessing the source systems, some data modeling, but of course a lot of your job is to create good reports and good data analysis for the end users. But here you get exposed to the entire the entire workflow, which is a good thing. But in, in larger companies, you might not have that much of a freedom. The downside is that as things are less centralized, it might be more overheads to make sure that you and if there is someone else who will also works on data-driven initiatives quite synced on the logic you use and also how you guys communicate to the end users and of course because there's no data warehouse there's no centralized semantic layer then you guys are really the ones providing information to the end users which once again could make you guys to turn into bottlenecks if there's there are a lot of demands so that is company a that is how it can be for a smaller company so if we think about the skills that you would use like i said you know you have data modeling data cleansing so sql um or or any other sort of language which you might use if you use python you know you have pandas or there could be other packages that you're using you are using power bi or tableau or click whatever it is there's probably a expression language so if it's power bi it's dax it's uh, tableau then it's level of de detail calculations and if it's click that's set analysis the so small company some benefits some downside let's look what a a medium-sized company could look like so a medium-sized company there the two guys or the data analysts or the data scientists they might have access to the data warehouse or the views so the data sources are being centralized through a extract transformation process and load into a data warehouse so you have a centralized place so you don't get full access to the data sources but you get access to the fact and dimension tables that have been cleansed you might even have a data engineer who are you know, handling this process and you might have a data scientist who is handling the python the advanced uh, analysis and your focus is really using the cleansed data warehouse to create good reports to create good analysis and then pass that on to the end users through maybe power bi or some other data visualization tool so this is i've written somewhat governed access it means you know you don't get access directly to the source but you get access to the data warehouse could be some data modeling definite data visualization and it could be some advanced analysis and there the data modeling might be that you are and you might do something to the tables which are coming from the data warehouse but a lot of that stuff would be handled by a data engineer and some of the advanced analysis might be handled by a data scientist team but you would definitely be working in a visual visualization tool you would definitely be working in a reporting tool to create the necessary data analysis for the end users you know upsides is that you get more of a focus you are probably working more towards end users because there are probably more requirements if you are interested in data modeling then you might not really get exposed to that that much because the data engineer is already doing that if you are interested in advanced analysis you might not be exposed to that because there might be a data scientist who handles that it just might not be one of your one of your tasks so in this case you, you might use some sql to get data out of the data warehouse you might use some sort of calculation language in whatever visualization tool you might not even be exposed to advanced analysis if there is a advanced 
as an analysis team there, you might not be exposed to, to some heavy data engineering because there's no need. There is a specific team for that. So that is how it could look at a medium sized company, a little bit different from the, the smaller size, but here, you know, there, there's more governance, there's more centralization. You go to a larger company um, or, or it could also be a medium company. You have a similar setup here. You can have, you know, you have a data warehouse, you have a data engineer who is in charge of that. He, he handles the ETL process. And then you have data scientists who might handle the data science advanced analysis purposes. But here you could also have a semantic layer, which kind of lays on top of the data warehouse where you actually have, you can have data marts or you can have prepared data marts that are created for a specific business purpose, which doesn't only contain the right dimension tables and the fact tables connected, but it also connect, it also contains calculations, which could then be used in different uh, settings. So, you know, if you have a semantic layer, such as in Microsoft, you have Azure analysis services where you store the connections between the different tables and you store centralized calculations. Then you could connect that Excel to the semantic layer. Some of the end users could do that. You can connect Power BI to that. So you also have the calculations are also centralized in the company and you might have a senior data analyst or a senior BI person create that semantic layer and kind of handle that. And you as a data analyst spend a lot of time maybe, you know, teaching, showing, um, using the semantic layer, creating reports based on the semantic layer. Maybe you guys are the ones who uh, create the governed reports and then the end users also get to use Excel or Power BI and connect to the semantic layer. So here, you know, here you have access to the semantic layer and you might have access to the data warehouse or views if you need it. So this is more of a governed setup. And here, you know, there could be some data modeling but a lot of times that will be handled by the semantic layer. So your focus is really on data visualization, using the centralized metrics, uh, maybe testing the centralized metrics, maybe maybe uh, helping the end users with using the semantic layer, and then use that to create great analysis and great value for the for the end users. So those are some different job scenarios which you might end up in as a data analyst. And depending on the company's architecture, depending on you know what kind of teams do they have there and what are the business requirements, it might be very different how you apply your skill set. And this really shows how at one company you. Could be focusing a lot more on the front end stuff you could be a lot more in power bi you know focusing on creating calculations and and helping end users because they have a lot of governance they have a lot of set processes but at a small company you might get more freedom you might get more ownership of the entire process but then again of course you're doing a lot more back end stuff so it can be very different from company to company how you apply your skill sets if you like this video then give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos on data and analytics then subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in the next video